mystery facts video. That video has been my most successful video by miles. And um, thank you so much for the support on that. I think it's on over like 110,000 views or something ridiculous. So I figured it would be silly not to do a part two. And so I found hundreds of hopefully different um, history facts. There may or may not be some repeats, but I went to different sources and sites. So we should be, we should be in the clear. But before we get into those history facts, I have a little bonus fact for you now. Totally not cringe segue incoming. The fact is, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. As somebody who spends practically their whole life sitting in front of their computer, internet security is obviously something that is very, very important to me. So when the guys at NordVPN reached out wanting to collaborate, I thought it would be a really good opportunity for us both to get a really good deal on what is an incredible service, to be honest. If you go to nordvpn.com slash allsorts and apply the coupon code allsorts at checkout, you will get one whole month for free when you buy a two-year plan. That's nordvpn.com slash allsorts with the coupon code allsorts. But some of you may be wondering, what exactly is NordVPN and how does it benefit me? Well, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, a service that protects your internet connection and privacy online. It creates an encrypted tunnel for your data, protects your online identity by hiding your IP address and allows you to use public Wi-Fi hotspots safely. And NordVPN is certainly the most fast and reliable service out there. One amazing use of NordVPN is say you want to access a show that's on Netflix that isn't available in the country you're currently in. Well, simply open up NordVPN, open up the map, click your desired server, you'll be connected in seconds and you'll be able to watch whatever show that you want to. It really is so easy and NordVPN has over 5,400 servers in 60 different countries so you'll always be able to find what you're looking for. NordVPN have also recently launched their threat protection feature which blocks ads, trackers, militias and harmful websites and files which is a feature that is insanely useful to me personally. So whether you want to have the best internet security possible or you just want to see what British or American Netflix has to offer, be sure to go to nordvpn.com slash allsorts and use the coupon code allsorts to get a truly amazing deal. Thank you so much to the guys at NordVPN for being the first ever sponsors of this channel and thank you very much for watching. But now, I think it's time we got into those history facts. Enjoy. Fact number one. Louis, I don't know my Roman numerals, XVI, and Mary Antoinette fled the palace and tried to go incognito when revolution broke out. But a postman thought he recognised them and he confirmed his suspicions by comparing the king's face to the one on banknotes. Iran kept 52 Americans hostage, which was a big deal. Such a big deal that the media largely ignored the siege of Mecca, in which terrorists took 100,000 people hostage. King George V was euthanized. His staff wanted his death to make the morning papers rather than the evening ones, so they put him to death early with drugs without his consent. People remember the Tet Offensive as a successful campaign by the North Vietnamese, which got the Americans to admit defeat, but the campaign cost the communists more than it gained them, and yet the Americans used it as an excuse to leave because the war had lost too much support back home. Harriet Quimby thought she'd make history by being the first female pilot to cross the English Channel. She should have picked a better day, with the Titanic having just sunk. No one cared about her flight at all. That's kind of sad. Following the 
explosion of the Challenger, teams spent nine weeks searching a wide area for bits of wreckage. In the process, they stumbled on a duffel bag with 25 kilos of cocaine. What a score. Lewis and Clark ate their pet dogs. This wasn't even out of desperation. they just grown tired of eating salmon. The scientists designing the A-bomb weren't so great when it came to safety standards. One guy accidentally swallowed their precious plutonium. They bumped his stomach and separated the plutonium back out. In World War One, two drinking buddies, British commander Edmund Rhodes and German captain Bernd, found themselves on opposite sides when war broke out. So Rhodes fired at Bernd's ship. Bernd agreed to surrender and the two went right back to drinking. The Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. Russia exited World War I in March 1918. They wanted a peasant present, a peasant present, for symbolic reasons when they signed a treaty. So they grabbed a random old guy off the street to sit among the royalty. When they asked him whether he wanted red, wine or white, he replied, whichever one is strongest. When Stalin and Mao met in 1949, these Soviets disconnected these sewage lines to Mao's home so they could collect his poo and secretly store it in boxes. How on earth would they know that and why on earth would they do that? Like, really? We like to remember Live Aid as the most successful charity concert of all time. But when you track where the proceeds went, often right into dictators' hands without stipulations and used to purchase arms, it's possible the concert killed more people than it saved. Yeah, but Queen were good, so... In 1904, England and France signed an agreement that ended almost a thousand years of conflict. They did so because King Edward the Seventh, the Seventh wanted to visit French brothels. I'm so bad with Roman numerals, I'm very sorry. Multiple times during the Civil War, a Union soldier and Confederate soldier got close enough to bare knuckle box and the surrounding army stopped fighting so they could watch the match. We were still paying a pension to one child of a Civil War soldier as recently as last year. Irene Triplett died last May, just 11 days after we wrote about her. I assume this is like an American site. Most probably. The Civil Rights Movement Following the movement, psychiatrists began diagnosing black men with schizophrenia much more often. Patients suffered from delusional anti-whiteness, said doctors. Schizophrenia meant mandatory confinement. The Hatfield-McCoy feud. Records are vague about how this famous family feud started, but it now looks like the McCoys suffered from von Hippel-Lindau disease. This genetic condition creates tumours that cause hair trigger rage and violent outbursts. The Zoot, the Zoot Suit Riot. This event was immortalised by a swing revival song, but is otherwise forgotten, probably because it has a week-long series of hate crimes carried out by Navy men. Oh, it was a week-long series of hate crimes, sorry. The Stonewall Inn is a national monument now, but don't imagine that it was an LGBT haven just because people used to meet there and drink. The Mafia ran it, and they made money blackmailing their customers. The Race to the North Pole. I actually want to do a full history video on this topic, and the South Pole as well. Robert Berry is remembered as the first man to reach the North Pole. Really, he was a bumbling nut. Credit should go to his sled driver Matthew Henson, 
who not only dragged him there like he was cargo for most of the trip, but reached the pole 45 minutes before Barry did. The next fact of the race to the South Pole. If you're from a country that ever had ties to England, you likely learned about Captain Robert Scott's heroic attempt to reach the pole. Strange how you hear more about it than Roald Amundsen, who beat him there by five weeks. Ancient Olympians performed naked, as you may well know, to prevent erections, men tied to their foreskins shut with a string called a noidos desmi, which translates as talk leash. <laughs> Maybe not the kind of fact to include in an ASMR video, but there we go. <laughs> the Protestant Reformation. Why did Martin Luther get married? Because twelve nuns escaped from a, com a convent, and their leader insisted on marrying Luther despite his own claims that he did never marry. The launch of Sputnik. The US was not actually crestfallen when Russia's launched a satellite. They were relieved. They'd had the technology to launch their own satellites, but feared that doing so would invade international airspace and trigger a war. Sputnik let them know satellites were okay. When testing the first spacesuit, things went wrong. Volunteer Jim LeBlanc was exposed to a total vacuum. He didn't explode, but the staff did have to rush to save him from dying. After Yuri Gagarin became the first man in space, the Soviets weren't able to calculate where he'd land with much accuracy. He ended up surprising some potato farmers who'd had no idea the space program existed. Chapa Chapaquiddick is the title of this next fact. We know that Ted Kennedy was charged with leaving the scene of an accident after driving his car off a bridge, killing the woman with him. But it didn't garner as much attention at the time as it might have, because the same weekend Apollo 11 reached the moon. Lincoln had a bodyguard who was supposed to protect him that night at the theatre. Instead, the guy left the theatre and went to the bar next door for a drink. Eleven days after the assassination, the Sultana sank, killing 1,800 people. The Sultana was already a famous ship, and more died than would later die in the Titanic, so this should have been a massive story, but the press was obsessed with John Wilkes Booth's death the day before. During the Blitz, Belfast sought to kill all its dangerous zoo animals, predicting that a bombing by the Germans would set them three free and cause chaos. One zookeeper sneaked out an elephant, saving it, and it lived another 20 years. Big up that zookeeper. Both sides during World War II left landmines in the African desert. Tens of millions of landmines. The climate preserved them so well that in the 21st century, ISIS dug up minefields as sources for explosives. Arctic Operations Fighting in the Arctic, the Soviet Navy presented a British captain with a reindeer, so his wife would have a beast to help plow the snow. This was an inconvenient gift, but the British were too polite to reject it, so they took the deer into their sub and lived with it for six weeks. Sure, it's impressive that so many soldiers managed to escape Dunkirk, but it was still one heck of a win for the Germans, who seized 84,000 vehicles the British had left behind, along with 65,000 tons of ammunition and supplies. The Siege of Leningrad Russians turned to cannibalism during Leningrad's long siege. And this wasn't just a case of people cooking and eating the fallen dead. Gangs of cannibals roamed.
corrupt streets, cannibalism, not just corpse eating, but also Leo, Leodo Yetzvo, which is eating someone who flees from you. Again, a real nice positive topic for an ASMR video. Treating radiation after the bombing led to the, uh, this is of Hiroshima, led to the development of bone marrow transplants, which have since been used for a bunch of conditions unrelated to nuclear warfare. The AIDS epidemic. Gaetan Dukas was considered patient zero for AIDS in America, meaning the guy who brought it here. But patient zero was just a misunderstanding of his actual designation, patient O, where O stood for out of California. AIDS was in the US years before he got infected. Bill Clinton's election. People remember Clinton playing the sax on Arsenio Hall to endear himself to the public. No one remembers his motive. He was distracting people from his sex scandal. No, not the one for which he'd be impeached. The Jennifer Flowers one. Jerry Whittington was the first black personal secretary to a president in the Johnson administration. To announce her appointment, Lyndon Johnson put her on What's My Line, a game show where contestants try to guess someone's profession. High-ranking samurai strapped giant balloons to their backs. They inflated this bag called a horo to protect them from arrows. Woodstock was very much a money-making affair, not some kind of hippie dream. It started when Capitol Records answered an ad from investors reading, young men with unlimited capital looking for interesting legitimate investment opportunities and business propositions. During the Cold War, CIA agents in Moscow, knowing they were being tailed, kept inflatable sex dolls in their cars. They'd exit the car and inflate the doll, convincing the KGB agent intermittently watching them that the car was still occupied. We got be some stupid agent to believe that. The Lindbergh kidnapping. Authorities tortured a man to arrest him for the kidnapping. Real torture, they tied him to a rack. They got, he got the death penalty based on his tortured confession, which he ended up recanting. The KGB was involved in the assassination of Kennedy, not in carrying it. Not in carrying it out, no, but in spreading conspiracy theories afterward to undermine the US government. <laughs> it's a bit odd now how much attention Lindbergh's flight got. It wasn't the first non-stop transatlantic one. It was a sporting victory, not a technological one. So you'd think the bigger story would be how, that same weekend, Someone murdered 38 Michigan elementary school students. That's the biggest school mass killing even today. I mean, I don't know when this was written, but sadly it's likely that's probably been surpassed. April 4th, 1968 was the day Martin Luther King was killed. The one silver lining is that he spent the earlier part of that day having fun by having a pillow fight with friends in his hotel. Wow, well, how awesome. One of the lesser known effects of Hurricane Katrina. More than 1,000 coffins floated out of their graves and dooms. The skeletons landed far from their burial sites, making identifying them a headache. New Orleans passed a new law afterward demanding labels for coffins. That's horrific. The gold rush. Gold wasn't the only way to make money when settlers headed to California. In 1851 and 1852, the state paid over a million dollars in bounties for killing or maiming Native Americans. One ad offered $25 for a male body part, whether it was a scalp, a hand, or the whole body and then $5 for a 
child or a woman. Lovely. Sultan Ibrahim of the Ottoman Empire, a total nervous wreck and a generally unbalanced ruler, once had his whole harem, a total of 280 con concubines, thrown into and drowned in the Bosphorus Strait. Napoleon wasn't actually on that short. Sure, he was five foot six, but that was pretty much average for his time. One expert suggests that as many as 600,000 people were designated witches perished during the medieval period. Giants were a big part of ancient Greek mythology and their existence was proved to the Greeks by enormous bones that could be found buried throughout the mountainous landscape. These giant bones were probably very convincing, although today we know that they were likely the bones of woolly mammoths and mastodons that can still be found all over the country. Dentures. What would old people and hockey players do without them? Well, until the mid-1800s, dentures, aesthetically pleasing as they may be, were actually often made of teeth pulled from deceased soldiers. Hey, they're not using them right. Waste not, want not, I guess. George Washington, however, had luxury dentures. They were reportedly made out of gold, lead and ivory, and were a mix of human and animal chompers. But no wood. The extremely goth Britons of the Ice Age commonly, commonly used old human skulls as cups. As if fanning someone all day with a leaf wasn't hard enough work. In ancient Egypt, servants were often lathered in honey to keep flies attracted to them and not the pharaoh. What a job. Pour out another one for ancient dental hygiene. In ancient Rome, it was totally normal to use urine as mouthwash. During the Victorian period, many teacups had special guards on the top to keep men's moustaches from becoming dipped in the tea. Fittingly, they were called moustache cups. In the medieval ages, animals could be put on trial and were very commonly sentenced to death. <laughs> Over the course of his massively powerful campaigning around Asia and Europe, Genghis Khan killed an estimated 40 million people. That was 10% of the world's population. But he's also pretty much everyone's common ancestor. So all that killing and maiming balances out, right? <laughs> Today, the rich have plastic surgery, liposuction and blood transfusions. But back in the 16th century, the really wealthy used to eat dead bodies thinking that somehow the cadavers could cure diseases. The highest delicacy of all these bodies, that was Egyptian mummies. <laughs> Two titans of their time also share a big day. President Abraham Lincoln and Charles Darwin were born on the exact same day, February the 12th, 1809. Conquerors really loved their horses, and Roman Emperor Ga Gaius, you might know him as Caligula, even went as far as to make his horse a senator and wanted to eventually make it a consul. Winston Churchill typically smoked 8 to 10 cigars a day, sometimes as much as 15. That's cigars, not even cigarettes. That is disgusting, I bet his breath stank. But he helped win us the war, so you know, we'll let him off. Pharaoh, dude and Carmoon's parents were closely related. Like, really close. His mother and father were actually siblings. Oh, a marital arrangement that was not uncommon among the ruling classes at the time. Some experts disagree, however, and say his parents were cousins. Yeah, because that's much better. 
not brother and sister. <laughs> Before modern technology made their professional but obsolete, people would hire knocker-ups to wake them for work. These knocker-ups would generally tap a long stick at their client's windows. This still sounds better than being woke up by the default Apple alarm ringtone, to be honest. Ever wondered what the D in D-Day stands for? Well, wonder no more. It stands for day. Yes, it's day day. It's a military term for when an attack is to be launched. Iceland's parliament is the oldest in the world and has been in existence since 930. After a long day working on the Great Pyramids, ancient Egyptians liked to get into bed, unwind and lay their heads on a nice comfy rock. That's right, they used rock slabs for pillows. I wake up at the best of time in the morning, like with my shoulders aching, my neck aching. That's on a nice pillow. In the 1920s, Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov unsuccessfully attempted to create a human chimpanzee hybrid by using artificial insemination. The various names for this hybrid a humanzee, a tuman, and a, a manpanzee. Pick your favourite, I quite like humanzee. Silphium, also known as laser wart, was a plant that was once an effective and extremely popular contraceptive. Pliny, sounding like a guy who totally understands women's periods, noted that it could promote the menstrual discharge. Unfortunately, it was so popular that it was harvested to extinction. Some researchers even speculate that the shape of the plant is what gives us the traditional heart shape we use to denote love and romance today. Wow, so the love heart is a love heart because of a plant that stopped periods. There you go. Disease bingo. George Washington might have been the first president of the United States, but he also should have been first in line to see a doctor. The guy variously contracted malaria, dysentery, smallpox, and diphtheria, among other diseases. Just needs to wash his hands. Hitler, like many members of the Nazi party, was vehemently against cruelty towards animals and was a strict vegetarian. If only he'd applied that logic to literally any other part of his life, yeah. That's, uh, that's really weird. That's very strange to me. Much like Hitler, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin is not much known for his kindness and mercy. This is, after all, a man who ordered the purges on his own people, resulting in around 20 million deaths. But guess what? Dude was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize in 1945, and then again in 1948. That's right, I don't have a single Peace Prize nomination, and Joseph a freaking Stalin has do. I'm just saying, I didn't kill millions of people. <laughs> yeah, that's strange. I wonder what he got nominated for. It was probably corrupt, wasn't it, realistically? Because the name sounded too German. Americans used to call hamburgers Liberty Steaks during World War II. So the whole French fries, Freedom Fries fiasco was really just a sequel. Hitler's nephew William, a US Navy soldier, actually fought against Hitler during the war. On April 26th, 1986, the Chernobyl disaster struck the Soviet Union when a nuclear plant released radiation pretty much everywhere after an explosion. Firemen were sent into the centre of the radiation to extinguish the fire, and the radiation was so intense in this exclusion zone that one fireman's eyes were said to turn from brown to blue. I've actually got a full, full video recorded of uh, the Chernobyl disaster history video on that, but it's going to stay just away on my computer for a while, obviously, with, I just felt a little bit in, 
insensitive uploading it with everything going on in, U in Ukraine. I wouldn't want to be, you know, seen to be capitalising on that or anything. So it's going to stay uh, stay away from the channel for a little bit. The ancient Egyptians have given us a plethora of cultural behemoths, from the Great Pyramids to the Sphinx to the Rosetta Stone. Still, you can't get everything right, and these same people also thought that the brain's primary function was the production of mucus. Although they didn't make it over to England until the 1600s, pineapples became a massive fad in the UK in the 1700s. People would carry them round as symbols of their wealth and status, and everything from clothing to kitchenware was decorated with the exotic fruit. You could even rent a pineapple for an evening and take it out for a spin to impress all your friends. <laughs> and by impress all your friends, I assume if you're renting out a pineapple, you don't have any friends. You could draw a little face on it and call it Wilson. Ancient Greece was a strange place. For one, they believed that redheads turned into vampires after death. Okay, okay, so maybe they're right about that one. They also thought that small penises were elegant, especially in comparison to bigger packages, which they associated with old men and barbarians. Yeah, you know, I, I can get behind that Greek, that Greek belief, probably. The four suited kings in a traditional deck of cards actually represent historical kings. Some of the assign, assign, assignations assignations are in dispute but largely the kings are thought to be King David of Israel as the King of Spades Alexander the Great as the King of Clubs Charlemagne as the King of Hearts and either Augustus or Julius Caesar as the King of Diamonds Since written accounts of history only began about 6,000 years ago about 97% of human history is lost to the sands of time. Modern humans first appeared around 200,000 years ago. Most people can agree that singing birthday cards are kind of annoying. But tell that to Winston Churchill. The cards which contain a chip that plays the song hold more computing power than all of the Allied forces had at their disposal in 1945. And your cell phone, well, it's got more power than NASA had in 1969. You know, that year they sent humans to the moon. But you keep on playing Candy Crush, don't let me interrupt you. <laughs> that is mental, isn't it? I knew that fact about the birthday card and what will do. That just blows my mind. With all the history we have behind us, it can be hard to keep track of everything. Which is why it seems super disorienting to think that the University of Oxford, which opened its doors to students in 1096, is actually older than the Aztec Empire, which began in 1427, by hundreds of years. But this on your list of strange ancient battles. Medieval manuscripts depict knights fighting snails. Granted, no one actually knows why the knights are fighting these snails, but maybe it's best to keep the mystery. <laughs> For a very long time, people believed that diseases were caused by bad smelling, infected air. It's what's known as the miasma theory of disease. This is why plague masks look so freaky. Plague doctors wore them and the masks, the masks' long, hollow noses, held flowers and other competence of the smelly, supposedly diseased air. I didn't know that. I didn't know that's why those Dr. Mars look like that. See, I'm learning as well. Isn't this great? When Russians get lost in the revelry after the defeat of Germany in World War II, Moscow literally ran out of vodka. Considering this is a country that later encouraged citizens to drink vodka to stave off cancer in the aftermath of Chernobyl, I'm shocked. <laughs> Here's a comeback for all the messy mums out there. Tablecloths, no matter how fancy they've gotten today, 
were originally designed as one big napkin. Guests were meant to wipe off their hands and faces on the tablecloth after a messy feast. Shakespeare gave us what many see as the perfection of the English sonnet. Dozens of new words and phrases that we still use today, and a lasting oath of work that we're forced to study in high school. He also, in his infinite wisdom, gave us one of the very first answers. <laughs> very first ancestors of the Yo Mama joke. Demetrius, villain, what hast thou done? Aaron, that which thou canst not undo. Chiron, thou hast undone our mother. Aaron, villain, I have done thy mother. That is a, that is a cold burn. Nice. Look, I don't want to blow your mind or anything, but... Cleopatra was Greek, not Egyptian. She was an ancestor of Ptolemy, one of Alexander the Great's generals. So, Stalin had two Nobel Peace Prize nominations. Hitler was a pizza-loving vegetarian. But what else can surprise you? Well, Saddam Hussein was given the keys to the city of Detroit in 1980. Wow, that is crazy. Next time your parents try to tell you to stay in school, tell them Harry S. Truman. They may know him as the 33rd President of the United States. He didn't have a college degree. I mean, he was the last president not to have one. And these days you can barely get a job as a receptionist without at least a BA. <laughs> but the point is, Mum, he didn't have one. <laughs> Old Japanese scrolls show that in the 1500s, people used to engage in a funny but truly disgusting game where the players would try their best to outfart the others. So the facts from this next article I think are like a little, little bit different in their structure. The title of the article is 50 historical facts that will warp your sense of time. So The Last Guillotine and Star Wars. The last execution by Guillotine in France happened after the premiere of Star Wars A New Hope. Adopted by Louis <clears throat> XIV sorry, as a humane method of execution, the guillotine remained in use for nearly two centuries, dropping for the last time on September 10th 1977, nearly f four months after the first Star Wars film, It Simmers. <laughs> Fascist Spain and Microsoft. From October 1936 up until Francisco Franco's death in November 1975, Spain was ruled by a fascist dictator. On the other side of the pond, in May 1975, Microsoft was founded by Americans Bill Gates and Paul Allen. The contrast between the development of these two countries at this point in time is stark to say the least. The fax machine and the Oregon Trail. The first major wagon train of nearly 1,000 pioneers left Elm Grove and set out to follow the Oregon Trail in search of a new future on May 22nd, 1843. Five days later, on May 27th, 1843, Alexander Payne filed his patent for the fax machine. It's crazy to think that newly arrived pioneers could have sent a fax to their East Coast family to let them know they'd arrived safely. Starry Night and Nintendo One probably wouldn't associate video games and 19th century oil painting with the same moment in history, but they'd be wrong. Vincent van Gogh painted his masterpiece The Starry Night in 1889 while staying at a mental asylum, the same year that Nintendo formed as a corporation, although Nintendo's first product was actually playing cards, not Playstations. Not Playstations. Obviously an absolute boomer has written this article. You don't have a Nintendo Playstation, do you? Theory me, it's disgraceful. That's actually warm me up a bit. Kublai Khan and New 
Zealand. New Zealand was one of the last places on Earth to be settled. Thanks to radiocarbon dating, archaeologists have been able to determine that Polynesian explorers first arrived around 1250 AD. At the same time, Kublai Khan, one of history's greatest conquerors and the ruler of the Mongol Empire, assumed leadership of his homeland. The Mongol Empire is something I actually don't know too much about, and it's on the list to do a whole dedicated history video to, so we'll get around to that at some point, I'm sure. The ab abolition of slavery and the iPod. In 2001, Steve Jobs changed the world when he launched the first version of the iPod. With room to hold 1,000 to 2,000 songs, wow, and a battery life of 10 hours, oh, amazing. The first generation iPod now sits in history museums. Five years later, when the sixth generation iPod was launched, slavery was abolished in Mauritania. The last country on earth where it was still legal. That is mental. 2006. And while technically the practice is criminalised here, Mauritania is still widely regarded as the slavery's last stronghold. That one really has blown my mind, actually. Former slaves and World War II. World War II officially began in 1938. I thought it was 39. Although America staved off any involvement until 1941. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation and slavery officially became illegal with the passing of the 13th Amendment in 1865. It stands to reason then there would have been many former slaves alive at the time of World War II. Those who had been slaves as children would have been in their late 70s or early 80s by the time America became involved in the war. Disney World and Sylvester McGee On the 1st of October 1971, Walt Disney World opened in Orlando to massive fanfare. Fifteen days later, Sylvester McGee, widely acknowledged as the last living former slave in America, died in Colombia. Woolly Mammoths and the Egyptian Pyramids. The Pyramids of Giza remain one of the world's biggest mysteries. How exactly were they built and without modern machinery? Aliens, it doesn't say that, it's just my view. Built between 2550 and 2490 BC, the Pyramids were completed during a massive flurry of construction. They were also built when prehistoric woolly mammoths were still walking the earth. The last Ice Age creature died in 1650 BC, 900 years after the pyramids were complete. Chinese guns and the Battle of Greasy. Greasy, I don't know. We tend to think of weapons development as fairly linear, but history shows that is anything but the case. The earliest known bronze gun that employed gunpowder was from the early Yuan dynasty and dates back to 1332. Meanwhile, the French versus English Battle of Greasy, which ended in 1346, was revolutionary for its use of the crossbow, a brand new weapon at the time. There's a lot of airplanes tonight. Samuel J. Seymour's Secret on April 14th, 1865, when Samuel J. Seymour was five years old, his parents took him to a production of Our American Cousin at Ford's Theatre in Washington, D.C. The same night, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. In 1956, Seymour recounted the experience on the CBS game show, I've Got a Secret. Discovery of Vitamins and the sailing of the Titanic. In 1912, Casimir Funk had a major scientific achievement. He discovered vitamins. The same year the Titanic set sail from Southampton, England. All in all, 1912 was a great year for medicine, but a bad year for transatlantic voyages. Death by firing squad. And Toy Story 
was still thriving as the baseball team slumped into their legendary drought. I feel like just the word empire just instantly makes you think it's super, super old, but actually, it's not. Socrates and Confucius, two of the world's greatest thinkers, we tend to lump Socrates and Confucius into one moment in time. In reality, the Chinese philosopher died in 479 BC, ten years before the Greek, great Greek mind was born in 469 BC. Spanish Flu and World War One. One of the most deadly conflicts the world has ever seen. An estimated 37 million people lost their lives due to World War I. At the same time, the worst flu pandemic in recent history, the Spanish flu, broke out in 1918. The flu took an estimated 50 million people worldwide, more than the war. That's crazy. The Model D and the first plane crash victim. On September 17th, 1908, Lieutenant Thomas E. Selfridge, a passenger in a plane flown by Orville Wright, died in an airplane crash. The first person to do so. Well, what an honour. He lost his life the same year Ford Motor Company introduced their Model T, which was on October 1st, 1908. Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. are heroes and icons who spend their lives fighting for human dignity and compassion. They're widely regarded with the same awe and reverence and they were both born in 1929. The Wall Street Journal and the Eiffel Tower in 1889 the first issue of the Wall Street Journal was published, with more of its space dedicated to the movement of the market. The same year, the official inauguration ceremony for the Eiffel Tower, then the tallest tower in the world, was held and attended by dozens of famous personalities. Doctor Who and JFK's assassination President John F. Kennedy was assassinated on November the 22nd, 1963. The next night, November 23rd, the first episode of Doctor Who aired. The episode had to be repeated the following week, as media coverage surrounding JFK's death largely overshadowed the 25-minute episode titled On an Earthly Child. Fall of the Berlin Wall and 9-11. More adults alive today remember both the fall of the Berlin Wall and the terrorist attacks on 9-11. But what most don't realise is that the September 11th, 2001 attacks are now closer to the fall of the Berlin Wall than to the present day. Twelve years lie between the fall of the Berlin Wall and the terrorist attacks. Well, and it says, well, it's been 17 years since the attacks, but obviously now it's been 21 years. Well, but that is how time works. Rosa Parks and Harriet Tubman. Rosa Parks and Harriet Tubman are both prominent figures in the civil rights movement. While we tend to think of them existing at two completely different points in history, Harriet Tubman was a slave after all. The reality is that the two women did overlap. Rosa Parks was born on 4th of February 1913, and Harriet Tubman died on March 10th, 1913. So while it wasn't long, and the two women most likely never came into contact, they were both alive at the same time. First airplane, and the first atomic bomb. On December 17th, 1903, Wilbur and Orville Wright successfully completed four flights at Kitty Hawk, earning them the designation of having invented the first airplane. Just over 40 years later, on July 16th, 1945, the first atomic bomb was tested in New Mexico. Orville Wright was still alive. 
Wizard of Oz and the Nazi invasion of Poland. The Wizard of Oz starring Judy Garland premiered on August 25th, 1939. A month later, as many Americans were heading to the theatre for a relaxing evening, the Nazis were invading Poland. Daytona 500 and Hawaii. It may be one of the biggest sports events of the year today, but back in 1959, the Daytona 500 was just getting its start. Lee Petty won the race that inaugural year, which was also Hawaii's inaugural year as a state. And we're going to finish with this one for you all this evening, the final history fact. Civil War and the first football game. The Civil War officially ended in the spring of 1865 when Robert E. Lee surrendered the last Confederate army to Ulysses S. Grant at the Appomattox Court House. Four years later, in November 1869, Rutgers and New Jersey played the first American football game. Rutgers won 6 4. And that is going to do it for tonight's video. Some really, really interesting facts there, and I didn't even get through all my websites, so we've probably got enough for a part three. If that's something that you want, then do leave a like. Once again, thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video, and if you guys feel like it, do click the link down below and see the, the great deal that you can get. And, uh, yeah... If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a like, leave a comment on any future uh, fact videos, history videos you'd like to see on the channel, and I'll add them to, I'll add them to the list, but subscribe if you're new guys, leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you were able, but until the next video, everybody.